I'm a sergeant in the U.S. Army. I'm here today to tell you the story of my first in revolution. Retake. Sorry. I forgot. Hello, America. My name is Zach Carter. I'm a sergeant in the U.S. Army. I have an ETS date of January 28, 2009. I'm here today to tell you the story of my personal revolution. I joined the Army in the early months of 2001. My patriotism led me to the recruiter's office. I had grown up in awe of my grandfathers and their stories of World War II. That reminiscing became my dreams. When I got to basic training, I did not talk about missing home like the other recruits around me. I felt at home in ways I never had before. The weeks after 9-11 found me in Kosovo, serving under NATO command, part of Charlie Company 37 Infantry, 3rd Infantry Division, patrolling the border with Macedonia as part of our duties. We had ammunition to defend ourselves with, and the authority to apprehend anyone crossing the border illegally. What you'd expect from the military, right? I'll get back to why these details are important later. Fast forward to 2003. I'm rolling across the desert in the back of a Bradley fighting vehicle, part of the spearhead into Iraq, there to enforce United Nations resolutions. Other than those first three weeks of shock and awe, what I remember most about Iraq was the people. Crowds of kids wanting to know about Michael Jackson and Britney Spears, open-minded adults wanting to know about our social freedoms, and 99% or so just wanted to raise their families in peace and did not hesitate to tell us. My platoon and I played soccer with some of those crowds of kids. We had dinner and shared food with families in their homes. Some of us even went to a few house parties, and my lieutenant and I spent one very memorable afternoon swimming in an irrigation ditch with five young women. It's all of them that I think of when anyone tells me that we need to turn the Middle East into a sheet of glass, or that all Muslims are enemies. I remember thinking on this when I was there, more so since I've returned, but what we were doing when we were doing our jobs, patrolling the streets, conducting roadblock vehicle searches, bodily searching individuals, and searching homes, couldn't be helping our long-range plans for winning hearts and minds. I really have to wonder, how long would it take me to move from a position of thanks for my despotic government being removed, to feeling like I lived in a conquered and occupied country? if I saw foreign troops on the streets of my hometown every day. Add to this our having bases and personnel in Turkey, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait, Egypt, Oman, the United Arab Emirates, Morocco, Tunisia, and Algeria. I may have missed a few. We have somewhere around 700 bases in 130 countries, some of them for decades. Our Navy off their coasts, our fighter jets in their skies, the CIA in business with monarchs, dictators, and thugs our State Department treating their leaders like irresponsible children. It's no wonder moderate Muslims take to the streets shouting death to America and an enraged minority takes action against us. This is hard to admit, but our actions do have consequences. I would hope we would do the same thing if, say, China had bases on our soil, her Navy patrolled our coastline, and Chinese fighter jets streaked across our skies. To do nothing in the face of foreign tyranny on our soil would be un-American and unimaginable. Why would we expect a different response from anyone in any nation? If the Chinese were here, they would brand me a terrorist. Would you? Fast forward again to the present day. I'm out of active duty and in the Army Reserves. I wanted to stay active duty, but my wife said I'd be single, so we had a compromise. To be honest, the Reserves have bored me to tears, and I haven't felt like I'm giving anything back to my country. So, I looked into getting attached to a National Guard unit on our border with Mexico for a tour or two. However, when I learned they don't have the authority to apprehend illegal border crossers and can only call up our overworked and overstretched border patrol when they spot illegal activity, I got myself into trouble again by thinking about what I had done in Kosovo. Why are we securing other nations' borders and not our own? To add insult to injury, our guardsmen and women on our own border don't have the authority to even defend themselves and on several documented occasions have actually had to retreat when facing fire from Mexican drug running and people smuggling paramilitary groups. Now why would I want to sign up for that? To be witness to the violation of American sovereignty? No one in the executive branch of our government is doing anything about it and it makes me wonder why I'm even in the army at all. All of this is why I'm leaving the Army. It's not an easy decision for me to make. I've been struggling with this for almost an entire year now. 
With seven years under my belt, I had planned on proudly serving until retirement. However, I cannot in clear conscience continue serving a government that is not representative of its people and governs in an unconstitutional manner. Why are we the world's policemen when our own country is being openly violated? Why are we borrowing money from nations not exactly our friends just to spend it on our out-of-control foreign policy? I'm starting to feel like the powers that be do not have America's interest in mind at all. It's starting to feel like our ruin is their objective. From our factories closing and moving overseas to the plunging value of our dollar, America is crumbling. Yet I love her far too much to watch her fall apart. This is why I'm taking my personal revolution and joining forces with Dr. Ron Paul's revolution. His bring all the troops home, non-intervention foreign policy, and plans to put America first again are just what we need at this time. I don't expect everyone to agree with everything he says, but I do hope we can put all our differences aside and join him in seeing that all the troops come home, America is defended again, the Republic restored, and America saved. I do hope to put the uniform on again one day, when America once again stands up for itself, and I can feel the pride of serving America and not NATO, the United Nations, or North American Union, but our own sovereign American interests. If I still have your attention and you are still unconvinced our foreign policy needs changed, I ask you to think on this for a minute. If we as a nation do not take the necessary and difficult steps in controlling our government's runway spending as only Ron Paul is advocating, then our arguments over foreign policy become meaningless as we won't be able to send our military personnel the bullets and beans they need. We won't be able to afford anything in the near future even remotely resembling our current foreign policy. I have made these statements fully aware that I am violating the Uniform Code of Military Justice, but I feel that after putting my life on the line for two foreign countries, I can put my freedom on the line for ours. Join me in voting for peace, freedom, and prosperity. Vote Ron Paul. Thank you, and God bless.